Welcome to our Bible study here at Austin Grove Baptist Church here on Wednesday. So good to have each of you. Thank you for uh, your faithfulness and your continued support and joining in uh, with us uh, Wednesday after Wednesday. So thankful for that. Uh, we're continuing the book of Galatians. Uh, you may notice uh, we are on, once again we're on location. We're still uh, in the Cane Creek uh, uh, Park. Uh, in Waxhaw, North Carolina. Uh, if you've uh, if you hadn't been here lately, let me encourage you to do so. You can bring your own kayaks to my right, to your left. Uh, they have a boat launch and they have a kayak launch that you can uh, kayak and it's so peaceful here. We're, we're happy to be here on a beautiful Lord's Day. Uh, the water's so calm, very little breeze blowing, just in a cool morning. Uh, so it's such a beautiful day that the Lord has given to us. So, so look with me at the book of Galatians, the third chapter. We're going to begin reading with verse 23, if we may. We're going to try to finish this chapter up here uh, 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 here to, uh, today. Look with me here, and I've got uh, Believe, I got a little caption under, over this path, particular uh, passage of scripture. Believers are free from the law. But before faith came, uh, here's what Paul writes to them. We were kept under the law. The Torah or the law that of the Old Testament. We were under that before faith came. Now faith, Jesus brought in that we must have faith in him. Many would see and would know Christ. Uh, and they would see him walk and talk and would have heard him. But we are to know uh, that, uh, that who Christ is, but knowing full well that Christ came not to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill that law, and he came to also give us an extension of that law, and that was in the matter of faith. So let's look and see how this interacts here. Uh, but, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterward be revealed. In other words, we really didn't have a knowledge or an understanding of what faith was and uh, how faith was going to enter into our picture, uh, into our lives. And in verse 24 record says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. The law was that which was leading or directing or pointing us to Jesus or to our Lord. And uh, that we might be justified or that we might be brought into the knowledge of uh, the faith in Jesus Christ and how important it is of what Christ has done and is willing to do for each of us. Uh, and as we're seeking out his will and his word in our lives to make an application of it to where we can live out. And our faith will be one that will begin uh, in very elementary stage, but as we learn more and more about God's Word and His will, that we will grow in our faith and our knowledge of Him. So look at verse 25. But after that faith has come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster. Now, uh, uh, instead of that schoolmaster, we're going to be under Christ under that uh, law. Let's look a little further here of what he says, what he's saying. Now, not replacing the law, but extending the law and giving us a new meaning or new direction. So let's continue, continue looking now as we see in verse 26. For you are all the children of God, and I want you to notice the next phrase, by faith, for we're all the children of God by faith, and look what it says in Christ Jesus. He's saying to these early believers, you now, because you have believed and trusted and you have had faith in Jesus Christ, that you now, you are his sons and daughters because of that faith in Jesus Christ. That Christ is that. The law is not that overshadowing uh, part of who you are and what you must obey. But Jesus Christ is leading and directing you and has forgiven you of your sins, but he's also teaching you how to walk and how to talk and how to have a relationship, not only with him, but with our Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to be that guiding force in each of our lives to where 
we are growing in our faith and growing in our knowledge of our Lord. And that's what Paul was wanting. He wanted to see these newborn again believers to come into to a, to a faith that would be understandable, but also uh, uh, in, and being able to be applied to their lives on, a, in on an ongoing basis. Look at verse 27 as we continue. For as many of, of you as have been baptized into Christ, look, listen to what he says. Paul says, you have put on Christ. We put on Christ out of our obedience to what to the Lord's command or the Lord's calling and direction for our lives. And today in 2022, we're calling on the Lord in his commands by the, by the uh, presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives and the Holy Spirit directing our lives and guiding our lives to that point. And Paul's telling them, look, you have, by being baptized and by following Christ, you have put on Christ and that is very important to you. Look at verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Now, this was very important to them because prior to Jesus coming, the Jews, they felt like they had a monopoly and ownership of, of God himself or Yahweh, the, uh, the one and only true God. And uh, they felt like Gentile faith was excluded. Uh, most of us, we really, we need to realize that uh, Christ brought God to everyone and he made sure that his disciples knew that even Paul would know that and Paul would would be a missionary to the Gentile nations and many of which here of this early church that Paul was writing to they were Gentile people and uh, here's what Paul was saying to them there's neither Jew nor Greek. And that, that must have been wonderful to them of realizing that God loves every one of them, not, not by nationality or, or whatever, here that God is Lord of all and of everyone. There's neither bond nor free. There's, there, there are those that you, we're all one in the Lord. What a beautiful thought and what a beautiful ideal that uh, now Paul is writing to them and reminding them, look, God is for everyone. God loves every, every one of you. He loves every person that's going to come into your town, your city, or your village. God loves every person that's going to come in on a ship or a boat uh, that's there that's going to bring items to trade or sell. God loves every one of them. And that is the field, which is white, ready to be harvested, that you need to be uh, uh, reaching out into and telling them about what Jesus Christ has done in your life. So here, and listen to what else he says. Listen to where Paul is reiterating what Christ had already taught them. He said, he said there's neither male nor female. He was elevating uh, uh, ladies to the very highest realm of, of saying there's neither male or female. We're all one in the eyes of the Lord and that God cares and loves about, loves each of you the very same. Now I want you to notice the last phrase here in verse 28. For you are all one in Christ. Every one of you are one in Jesus, one in the Lord. And if you be Christ, then you're in Abraham's seed. Now look, here's why Paul's writing this. He's saying, hey, to you, those that have uh, uh, known about Abraham and the promises that God made to Abraham, here is Paul reiterating and saying, look, the th promises that were made to Abraham Listen, they're still pertinent, and God took care of that, and God is still making, and those promises are being fulfilled even today. There is not those that, that, uh, uh, that are male or female. There are not those that are bond or free. There's not Jew nor Gentile. We're all on that level playing field that Christ has set us upon. And God loves, there's a lot of truth in what uh, uh, the song our children sing, Jesus loves uh, all the children of the world. And it's, it's, it's such good theology of realizing this is exactly what Paul was saying. As you look out around you, every person is loved of God. Every person is cared for of the Lord. You're one in the Lord. But you've got to, we have to adhere what Christ is like. We're not under that schoolmaster. We're under Christ. We're under faith. We're under that belief in the Lord. Now, listen to the last verse as we close out this chapter here and close today. And if you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed. But notice what else. 
your heirs according to now I want you to notice the last few words here your heirs according to the promise what was that promise that promise was that Abraham was going to be the father of many nations uh, and that but God was with them continually and steadfastly I hope that this day has been a good day Pray with me here if you would. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day and the blessings you've granted to us. Father, for every person who is listening, Lord, I pray your blessings upon them. And if they do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives, I pray that this will be the day. And if we need to rededicate or recommit our lives or place our lives on a different path, Lord, I pray that this day your Holy Spirit may lead and guide and direct us and just set things in order in our lives. Take care of us, Father. Bring us back at the next appointed time here as we want once again meet to share your word for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. May God bless you. Have a wonderful week.